this previously, but uh, it, it became much more of a realization to me when I realized that where I was was only about two miles away from Belmar, New Jersey, which was where the original campus of the King's College was. I set up an appointment to visit the original campus of the college. For those of you that were following uh, me on Facebook and Twitter, you saw me go to that place. And that series of buildings that was there in Belmar, that was uh, the place where Percy Crawford began the King's College, is a storied location, to stay, say the least. Um, this is where uh, Marconi, uh, developed uh, and innovated the whole technology of radio, which was one of the reasons why Percy Crawford, the great radio evangelist, was interested in starting a, uh, a liberal arts college there. It was also the place where radar was developed, uh, the, the technology that beat Hitler. It was the place where the uh, initial communications devices were pioneered that helped uh, uh, Neil Armstrong communicate with Earth when he went to the moon. Now, that was the original site of, of the King's College. But as far as I know, that has not been a topic of conversation that I've heard just on campus here in those first couple of days. So we need to be aggregating those stories. And alumni, you can be doing that uh, for us. Uh, part of that is uh, an ambition that I have long term is I would love for us to have an institutional history of the King's College that tells the whole story. So we need to find the right historian with the right interest in order to help us do that thing. So that's the first thing is telling the story. The second major thing that alumni do is you help us connect our current students with your places and spheres of influence out there wherever you are. And I'll return to that a little bit later with other questions that have come in, but that is absolutely mission critical for us because we have a distinguished alumni base, people that are doing things not only here in New York and in the Northeast, but more broadly nationally. So as our students go out, you can receive them and connect them to that King's College history. Now, the second question is, is a, a little bit of a throwaway question, but this does come up a little bit. Some people say, how old are you? So this is a question from John Harris, how old are you? Um, and, and some people say, are, are you Benjamin Button? Are you really uh, old enough to be president of a college? I am 42 years old, and um, uh, so uh, uh, November 20th, uh, 1970 is my, is my birthday. So put that one to rest. Here's a question from... Uh, following up from uh, Zachary Cochran, uh, which is a question about Manhattan alumni. If you could share one message with Manhattan alumni, uh, what would it be? And uh, one of the things that I would say, if I was limited to just one message for Manhattan alumni, is this. It, we are very solicitous of your help of finding people in the New York City metro area that would be a good fit for the King's College as students. We are, um, we are a traditional liberal arts college right here in the greatest city of the world. You heard me say that in my initial uh, announcement. We have a very distinctive and unique place doing that. But one of the things that will help our student body that are coming from the heartland of America or from the southeast or from the eastern seaboard is to have some sense of what the King's College means to New York City. And in order to do that, we need our Manhattan alumni to be involved in that. So uh, now, if I could break the rule and say not only help us recruit students, but let me just extend that and maybe make this a subset of the first part. Uh, our Manhattan alumni, we would really like to be able to see you on campus whenever and wherever possible. And, and here is why. Because if you are living in the New York City metro area, you are already a part of a very distinguished class of people who are making it in the city and doing important work. Those are the kinds of stories we need our current students to, to, to hear as they think about the next steps for them. So please connect to us um, and, and in any way that you can. And just for example, on Saturday night, I'm going to be going to uh, one of our uh, alumni's homes in, in Brooklyn, meeting with a bunch of alumni there. So um, if, if you would like uh, the new president to show up and, uh, and have dinner with you, I'd be happy to, to get together and come to you as well. 
Here's a question from, uh, from Derek Dickens, and it's one I'm very happy to answer. What, what are your first year priorities uh, at TKC? In my, in my initial letter to the faculty and staff and, and those in Common Cause here on campus uh, the, this summer, last week, one of the things that I, one of the ways I described the King's College is an academic community with godly ambitions. And so my number one priority is to keep the main thing the main thing, which is to underscore and advance the mission and vision of the college which is to provide a first-rate liberal arts education to help prepare leaders for the strategic institutions of our society and culture. And I said this in our announcement, and I believe that this is the case. We have the right mix of programs to be able to accomplish that goal here in New York City, in, in PP&E, in business and finance, in media culture, and the arts as well. And uh, one of the taglines that I gave in that initial announcement, I just want to uh, reiterate that, we're leading from the center of culture, New York City, with Christ at the center. Our mission statement says that we are committed to the truth of Christianity and a biblical worldview. That is the means through which we accomplish the end of preparing these strategic leaders for, for culture. Now beyond that, uh, my, my priorities for, for this year as uh, uh, an incoming president of the King's College is first of all to tell the story well. And in order to tell the story of the King's College well, in order to advance that mission to the constituencies we need to bring on board prospective students, friends, donors, alumni, and so forth, in order for me to tell that story well, I need to be listening to you. So I want to reiterate that phrase, I want to hit the ground listening. There's a lot of context to any new situation. I'm not an alumnus, uh, I'm a newcomer here, so I want to get that background as much as I can, and you are the people that are able to be in a position to help me with that. So, uh, a, a new president has these these primary agendas, and, and, and they are this. Uh, recruitment and retention. We want to be sitting here next year with the biggest and best class of uh, the King's College that, that we have, have ever seen. We are, secondly, we want to focus on the academic division of the college. Uh, we are currently in a search for a provost, and so I will be searching for a provost or a vice president for academic administration here at the King's College this year. So you can pray for me as we seek together to find the right person to fulfill that position. But the academic division, the faculty, and the courses, and the curriculum of this institution are the engine that makes this institution run. So I want to be focused on that as the president. I come from an academic background. I was a faculty member uh, who, who was, was promoted, uh, an academic dean at my former institution at Union University in Tennessee. So I want to be focused on academic matters. Then development. We want to be focused on uh, finding the right friends who believe in the college. I was saying to someone this morning on the phone that the mission and vision for the King's College is a slam dunk. Uh, we, we believe that, that we have an important role here that very few institutions, if no other institution, can play. So we're very proud of our position here in the city and we want to utilize it well, so we need to bring new friends into the work to help us. So if you have ideas of who we can connect with on that, that would be great. Another aspect that we will be, uh, that we've already launched, but be launching in a much more high profile way in the spring, is uh, our online properties. And basically the way to think of that, this is one of my focuses, is on ramps and off ramps for the King's College to bring new prospective students in. If you read any of the trade journals in higher education, they are all uh, replete with information about uh, how online education is changing the face of, on, uh, of higher education. We believe that we can deliver the King's College education with our faculty in the high-impact uh, way with, with excellence that we have been doing all along, and it will bring new people to our work because people can get started in, on a, a bachelor's degree at the King's College, and then our goal would be for them to join us physically here 
um, on the campus of the King's College and to get involved in the house system because, um, for example, the house system is not something that you could do online. So online education. Then finally, uh, if this is very important to me. I, I want to bring new friends into the work of the King's College. I want to help f uh, facilitate strategic alliances and new partnerships for the college. Now, why is that important? Because as we bring new friends and new eyes onto the work, people that are currently in, in, in uh, strategic institutions, what happens is, is as our students go on, they meet these people who are in a position to connect them to the people that they know. And so there are many fantastic institutions which I have referenced before, people I've already had meetings with in my first week here at the King's College, Eric Metaxas and Socrates in the city, Gabe Lyons from Q Ideas, meetings coming up with First Things Magazine, uh, financial institutions in the city. We're going to have uh, one of the leading architects here in the city who's helping uh, redevelop the financial district as the World Trade Towers fully come online in that plaza. He's going to be visiting us this fall and telling us how, what a dynamic place our campus and the environs in the financial district are going to be. So I want to bring as many of those kinds of people in who are strategic folks that can help connect our students on to the kinds of careers and uh, futures that, um, uh, that they are looking forward to. Now here's another question connecting to, to the alumni piece about students that are living more broadly outside of, of the New York area in Boston, Washington, uh, D.C., uh, and et cetera. Uh, how, how can you connect? First of all, one of the things that we need to be doing in our alumni basis is to, in our alumni base, in our alumni office, is to, uh, is to continue gathering together those stories of what you are, you are doing yourself. Because as we tell that stories, that gives us links to the institutions that you represent and are serving so ably and, and well in. The other thing, too, is that we constantly have our folks, whether it's myself or the faculty, staff, or admissions team that are in your area. So one of the things that we will definitely want to do uh, as we have alumni chapters can, continuing to develop and grow is to make sure that we gather together in other cities beyond New York City with the King's College alumni. And here's a very important uh, a part of this. Is, is to connect uh, the King's College alumni from those Belmar years uh, and then the Briarcliff Manor years to the current New York City years. That is very important to me. I wouldn't have gone to the Belmar campus. I wouldn't be reading the biography of Percy Crawford and be diving into the archives of the current current King's College uh, history if I weren't interested in doing that. We need to all be in solidarity with one another. And a key aspect of that is going to come up on September 14th for any of you that can make it. We will be having a 75th anniversary uh, reunion meeting on the old Briarcliff Manor campus in uh, Briarcliff Manor, New York. And uh, just over here in my office I brought with me, many of you have heard about this, a, a chair from those Briarcliff Manor days. We want to connect with you and connect our current students to uh, that distinguished and legendary campus. And so we'll be looking forward to that 75th anniversary and I'll be speaking there. We'll have other announcements forthcoming uh, about that event. Here's a question from Patricia Wooliver. What is the role of uh, the liberal arts at, at, at the King's College? And uh, that really is uh, the, the perfect question. That's the question that, uh, that I want to answer because one of the things that we know is this. Uh, the liberal arts are absolutely essential in our society and they have been instrumental in the history of the West to contributing to human flourishing. Uh, people get confused by the term liberal, liberal arts and they, they tend to think more of a core curriculum or certain programs, but there's a step before you even get to curriculum or, or uh, the catchphrase, a liberal arts college. It is, what are the liberal arts? The liberal arts are those disciplines that have a liberating influence on society. 
They are quite simply the things that every 18 to 22 year old person must know in order to keep society free. Now, I think that is something that we're all concerned about. How do we keep Western society flourishing? How do we keep it free from tyranny and despotism? The answer historically has been the liberal arts. And one of the things that, that I'm proud to say is that there is an unwavering commitment of the King's College to that liberal arts tradition. And uh, to use a British expression, the proof of the pudding is in the eating thereof. Our anchor program and the thing in which every single student immerses themselves when they get to this campus is that uh, tradition of PP&E, philosophy, politics, and economics that has deep ties to uh, our ancestors in the European continent, to Oxford uh, University. Our, it is those ideas, how to generate markets that lift people out of poverty. And, and here's the good news on the liberal arts. I think that we're beginning to see people understand how a discipline like economics, macroeconomics, is a liberating discipline. Rather than, you know, we see all these films that have corporations being the, the dirty culprit. I think what we're now seeing is people even like Bono, who recently said that the cure for a a Africa is the entrepreneur. And so that is something that the liberal arts provide for us as part of the curriculum. So we want that commonality. We want all of our students to go through that kind of program. And on the other side of that, are the kinds of businesses and key societal institutions that help, uh, help not only move the economy forward and employ people, but uh, create an overall um, environment in our society of, of human flourishing. And uh, you need to look no farther than the biography of Steve Jobs and Apple Computer to know the, the, the importance of the liberal arts. He said at the very beginning, I want to make Apple Computer a liberal arts tech company. Why? Because the liberal arts tell us about the importance of the arts, which leads to design. It teaches us the importance of free markets, which is how we distribute goods and services. It tells us about uh, how to write well and speak well, which is the way in which we, and, and the discipline of history, so that we sink down our roots deep into our tradition so that we are strong enough to grow forward into a preferred future for our society. So the King's College is uh, that kind of place with the liberal arts at, at its very core. And, uh, and that is not uh, going to change. Here's a question from uh, Craig Korfeld, uh, which has to do, what is the role of, of the King's College um, in being a presence in the global missions movement? Uh, now, I, I'm interested in that question for, for this reason. When you look at the current curriculum of the King's College, and, and without addressing what future programs might want to look like, I, I wouldn't want to go into that uh, uh, at, at this point. But what would be the role of the King's College in, in the worldwide Christian movement, if we could draw the lens back a little bit and focus on that question? What role do we have to play in the global perspective of the Christian church as we advance the cause of Christ worldwide and in, in, in sharing the gospel worldwide? And I think that is this. The, the enduring image for me here, and one of the things that is often lost, is, is the image of, of David Livingston, who, when he went, uh, when he went to the African, uh, uh, sub-Saharan African continent, and when he was doing his work, when you look at, uh, at, at uh, the tributes to him and the statue uh, 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 to him, it says on the base of that statue, Christ, commerce, and civilization, the three C's. You might even think that he is some kind of uh, Baptist preacher with, uh, with, with three C's, but Christ, commerce, and civilization. Now, how does that tie into the role of the King's College in the worldwide Christian movement? Here's one of the uh, most legendary missionaries that uh, the West had ever produced, David Livingston. But he understood that the thing that uh, creates space for people hearing the gospel is to lift them out of poverty. Commerce is a way of doing that. And so with our emphasis on economics, business, 
and finance, we are able to do that through the work of the King's College, through the new world of media that we have, through media culture and the arts and, and, and the like. So that is, uh, that's crucially important. And then let me, let me end on, on a, one other matter uh, just related to that. When you look at a text like Ephesians chapter 4, it says that some are called to be pastors, teachers, uh, evangelists, and so forth. Uh, to, to, and we sort of think of that as those are the people who are called to be in the ministry. But if you actually look at Paul's letter to the Ephesians, that is not actually what the text says. It says that some are called to be pastors, evangelists, and teachers to do what? To train up the ministry. And who are the ministry? The ministry is the laity. The ministry are the people who are out there in society making things happen for, uh, uh, for the kingdom of God in Christ. And so that is what we are about uh, at the King's College. So we definitely want to be looking for all the ways that we can be in solidarity with our friends and partners worldwide who are in that business of, of sharing the gospel worldwide and looking how we can uh, get our graduates and our alumni connected to those uh, matters of common Christian cause. I think we've come, I'm getting the, I'm getting the word from our, uh, from our staff here that we've come to the end of, of this particular time, and I'm sure we did not get to all of the questions that you have. So hopefully that will be a, a prelude to our next opportunity to do this. Thank you so much for those of you who are watching online. We'll look for future opportunities to connect. Uh, I just want to end by saying one thing um, as, as I sign off today. It is my intent as the president of this college to be here for the students of the King's College in this place uh, at 56 Broadway here in the, in, in the fifth floor of the King's College. Uh, myself, my wife, my children, we have moved here to the city. We want to be available to you. And so I hope that uh, this environment is a foretaste of, of a time in which we will all gather together here and be in life together here at the King's College in New York City. Thank you very much for watching.